Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya We are studying the Tatpurusha Samasa in this course in detail we said that tatpurusha samasa is the most productive of the four types of samasas namely avyayi bhava tatpurusha bahuvrihi and dvandva tatpurusha samasa also has many subtypes in comparison with other samasas Tatpurusha Samasa is also explained using numerous sutras in the grammar of Panini in comparison with the other Samasas, be it Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or be it Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra or the Samasa Swara Vidhayaka Sutra. The formation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be summed up in the form of an equation, a simple one, on this slide, where we have x and y, both independent and separate entities, in terms of their meanings, as well as the word forms, as well as the accent. But they are interrelated. And so the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together and form another output in the form of x, y. Now this x, y is one entity having one meaning, having one word form and also one accent. In the Tatpurusha Samasa, y out of x, y assumes the position of the head. This is the by default position. So y is the head. And what it implies is that when x, y becomes part of the sentence, then any other external word will be related to x, y through y, that is the head. If any other external word is related to x, y through x without going through y, then such a compound output is treated by the theory as exception and noted down as asamartha samasa. So far we have studied two subtypes of the tatpurusha samasa, namely the vibhakti tatpurusha in which we studied dvitiya, tritiya, chaturthi, panchami, saptami and shashti vibhakti tatpurushas in this order as stated in the grammar of Panini. Here we highlighted the fact that these Vibhakti Tatpurusha statements highlight that the Karaka theory forms the basis of the Samasa theory in general. Then we studied the Karmadharaya Samasa which is primarily a Samasa based on the co-referentiality as semantic relatedness governed by the Adhikara Samanadhi Karanena. Now, in this lecture, we will study two more types of Tatpurusha Samasa, namely Ekadeshi Samasa and the Naya Tatpurusha Samasa. Ekadeshi Samasa is 
actually part of the shashti samasa but because of the compound output this samasa is treated separately classified separately so this is called ekadeshi samasa ekadeshi refers to the word ekadeshin which means whole ekadesha means part and one which has a part is the whole <coughs> So this samasa is stated in 2.2.123. The first sutra in this section is Purva Paradharottaram Ekadeshina Ekadhikarane. There are three padas in the sutra. The first pada is Purva Paradharottaram. This is one one. And what it means is Purva, Apara, Adhara and Uttara, these words, these Subhantas. Now because they are mentioned in Prathama, by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam, they will be termed as Upasarjana and because of Upasarjana, Upasarjanam Purvam, they will occupy the initial position of the compound the Purva Nipata will take place. The second Pada in the Sutra is Ekadeshina, which is instrumental singular, which means with the word which denotes a whole. Ekadeshina. And finally, Ekadhikarane, which is 7 slash 1, which means in the sense of one substratum. So one substratum is denoted by the compound. So the words continued are sup, sahasupa, and also samarthaha, padavidhi. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. Any subanta whose pratipadikas are purva, apara, adhara, and uttara is compounded with any other interrelated subanta which denotes a whole and if the compound denotes one substratum. I repeat. Any Subanta whose Pratipadikas are Purva, Apara, Adhara and Uttara is compounded with any other interrelated Subanta which denotes a whole and if the compound denotes one substratum. So the structure of this compound is the following. The Purva Pada consists of any of the four Purva, Apara, Adhara and Uttara and the Uttara Pada denotes the Pratipadika and the Uttara Pada has the Pratipadika Ekadeshin. And so, in this case, the output generated would be Purva, Apara, Adhara, Uttara, one of them, and Ekadeshin as the other Pada, Uttara Pada. Now, if you have the meaning to be expressed as Purvam Kayasya, where Kaya is the body, earlier part of the body, that is the meaning to be expressed. Kaya means body, Purva means earlier part. Now Kaya is Ekadeshi, referring to a whole, and Purva is the part, Ekadesha. Now in this case, there is this Avayava, Avayavi Bhava Sambandha, which is the semantic relation, and so there is possibility of the compounding. So, by this sutra, Purva Para Dharottara Mekadeshi Naikadhikarane, the compounding takes place and so we have Purva plus Su plus Kaya plus Nas as the Alaukika Vigraha and then Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and Su and Nas, they both are deleted so we have Purva Kaya as the finally derived compound output. This compound output is referring to only one element, Ekadhikarana, and therefore all the conditions are fulfilled and Purva Kaya refers to the earlier part of the body, Purvam Kayasya. Similarly, later part of the body is the meaning to be expressed and 
we have the compound output generated upper kaya by following the same procedure. All the conditions are fulfilled. Similarly, when the meaning to be expressed is below part of the body, the compound output generated is adhara kaya. And when the meaning to be expressed is upper part of the body, uttara kaya will be the compound output generated. The next sutra is ardham napum sakam 2.2.2. This sutra has got two padas, ardham and napumsakam. Ardham is the prathama ekavachana of the word ardha. What it refers to is the word ardha. Ardha means half. But when it is in the neuter gender, it means exact half. That is what is being stated also by the qualifier napumsakam. Napumsakam means in neuter gender. The words continued are sup sahasupa and samartha padavidhihi. Also, ekadeshina and ekadhikarane. Ekadeshina means with the word which denotes a whole, and ekadhikarane means in the sense of one substratum. What this means is that a subanta whose pratipadika is ardha in neuter gender meaning exact half, is compounded with any other interrelated subanta which denotes a whole and if the compound as a whole denotes one substratum. I repeat, a subanta whose pratipadika is ardha in neuter gender meaning exact half is compounded with any other interrelated subanta which denotes a whole and if the compound denotes one substratum. So we have the meaning exact half of the pippali. Pippali is the name of a plant. So exact half of the pippali. Ardham pippalyaha. This is the laukika vigraha. Ardham pippalyaha. Now ardha is part of pippali. So there is avayava avayavi relation between the two. And so there is semantic relatedness. So we have ardha plus su plus pippali plus ngas as the alaukika vigraha. Now samasa saudhnya takes place because of this sutra. And then there is obviously pratipadika saudhnya. And then the sub look happens because of supodhatu pratipadika yoho. So we have ardha plus zero plus pippali plus zero. And then we join them together and we get the output in the form of Ardha Pippali as the finally derived compound output. Ardha Pippali. Similarly, we can also have Ardha Kosha Taki as another output. The next sutra is Dvitiya Trutiya Chaturtha Turyanyanya Tarasyam. This sutra has got two padas, Vitiya, Trutiya, Chaturtha, Turyani, and Anyatarasyam. This is two, two, three. So the first word is Dvitiya, Trutiya, Chaturtha, Turyani. This is Prathama Bahuvachana, meaning the words Dvitiya, etc. Dvitiya means second, Trutiya means third, Chaturtha means fourth, and Turya also means fourth. Because these words are mentioned in the sutra in Prathama Vibhakti, by the sutra Samasa, Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam, they will be termed as Upasarjana, and by the sutra Upasarjanam Purvam, they will occupy the initial position in the compound. The word mentioned is Anyatarasyam, which is an indeclinable and which means optionally. Words continued are sup and sahasupa, samartha padavidhihi, of course, and then ekadeshina with the word which denotes a whole and ekadhikarane in the sense of one substratum. When we join these meanings together, we get the meaning of the sutra. A subanta 
उस प्रातिपदिक आर आइदर द्वितीय तृतीय चतुर्थ एंड तुरय इज कंपाउंडेड ऑप्शनली विद एनी अदर इंटर रिलेटेड सुबंध विच डिनोट्स अ होल एंड इफ द कंपाउंड डिनोट्स वन सबस्ट्रैटम आई रिपीट अ सुबंध उस प्रातिपदिक डिनोट उस प्रातिपदिक आर आइदर द्वितीय तृतीय चतुर्थ एंड तुरय is compounded optionally with any other interrelated subant which denotes a whole and if the compound denotes one substratum the option here indicates that in the same semantic condition the general shashti tatpurusha samasa stated by the sutra shashti can also take place so the ekadeshin can also occupy the initial position of the samasa so now we have the meaning second part of the arms and this is expressed by dvitiyam bhikshayah dvitiyam bhikshayah once again there is avayava avayavi bhava sambandh also part and hold relationship so there is semantic relatedness and so samasa takes place so we have ditiya plus su and bhiksha plus nas as alaukika vigraha samasa takes place so then pratipadika saudhnya takes place and so supodhatu pratipadika yo applies and deletes both the su and nas so we have ditiya plus 0 plus bhiksha plus 0 when we join them together we get ditiya bhiksha this means exactly the same thing as द्वितीयम भिक्षाया नाउ ऑप्शनली वी कुड ऑल्सो गेट भिक्षाया द्वितीयम एंड देन द प्रोसेस विल कंटिन्यू भिक्षा प्लस नस विल ऑक्युपाई द इनिशियल पोजिशन ऑफ द समास एंड सो वील हैव भिक्षा प्लस नस प्लस द्वितीय प्लस सू समास सौज्ञा हैपन्स प्रातिपदिक सौज्ञा हैपन्स एंड सो सुपोधातु प्रातिपदिक यो अप्लाइज एंड सो वी गेट भिक्षा प्लस जीरो प्लस द्वितीय प्लस जीरो एंड सो वी गेट भिक्षा द्वितीय एज द फाइनली डिराइव्ड कंपाउंड आउटपुट सिमिलरली वील ऑल्सो गेट वेन द मीनिंग इज थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ द आंस वी विल गेट तृतीय भिक्षा और भिक्षा तृतीयम एज द फाइनली डिराइव्ड कंपाउंड आउटपुट similarly fourth part of the arms if this is the meaning then we'll get chaturtha bhiksha as well as bhiksha chaturtha as the compound output and in the same meaning we can also get turiya bhiksha and bhiksha turiya as well as turiya bhiksha and bhiksha turiya as the compound output even though the word turiya is not mentioned explicitly in the sutra there is a statement which which notes this town and adds it in this list and the statement is turiya shabdasya api ishyate so we have these outputs now the point that is to be noted over here is that the first two sutras stating the ekadeshi samasa namely purva para dharottaram ekadeshi naikadhikarane and ardham napum satam they are stated primarily to have the purva nipata of the words purva par etc and ardha if shashti samasa happens then these words would be occupying the uttara pada position after having studied the ekadeshi samasa now let us study the naya tatpurusha samasa a very important variety of tatpurusha samasa This is stated by one sutra, namely nine, two two six. There is only one pad, nine, in the sutra, and this means negation. And because this pad appears in the prathama vibhakti, this will be termed as upasarjana, and it will occupy the first position in the samasa output. What nine stands for is negation. What it actually means is. तद्भिन्न तत्सदृश इट इज नॉट निगेशन एब्सोल्यूट 
it is tadbhinna tat sadrasha. What it means is different than it, yet similar to it. Words continued are sup and sahasupa and also samartha padavidhi. So the meaning of the sutra is a subanta whose prasipadika is nai or na, meaning negation, is compounded with any other interrelated subanta in general. I repeat, a subanta whose pratipadika is na, meaning negation, is compounded with any other interrelated subanta. So, for example, when you have the meaning, namely, somebody who is not a Brahmin but similar to a Brahmin, if this meaning is to be expressed, we have the Laugika Vigraha Vakya as na Brahmanaha. Now, there is the semantic relatedness in the form of the co-referentiality also, na and Brahmana. So, Brahmana means Brahmana Vinna and Brahmana Sadrusha. So, now there is compounding that takes place. So, we have na plus su plus Brahmana plus su. This is the Alaukika Vigraha. Samasa Saudhnya takes place because of the prescription of the compound by this particular sutra, Nai. Then Pratipadika Saudhnya happens and then we have Subluk. So, we have na plus zero plus Brahmana plus zero by Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. Then there is one more sutra, 6373, that applies, Nalopo Nayaha. And this sutra deletes the consonant N of N. And so we have A plus 0 plus Brahmana plus 0. And so we have the finally derived output in the form of A Brahmana, which means not a Brahmin, but similar to a Brahmin. They refer to a person who is not a Brahmin. So, the peculiar position of this negation marker na is to be noted here. Generally, in Sanskrit, na is negated with the verb and it indicates the negation of the verb. But in the process of compounding, na is always related with the subanta and in that case, is always, it always means tadbhinna tat sadrusha. So there is a statement in the tradition which says, Paryudasasa vidnyayo yatrottara padena nai. So when the nai is related with the uttarapada, the meaning of nai is always paryudasa, characterized as tadbhinna tat sadrusha. When it is related with the verb in the sentence, then there is another technical term used, that is the meaning of nai, namely, Prasajya Pratishedha. It's the negation that is intended. Let us look at one more example of this sutra, which also has some more sutras coming in, playing different roles in performing some operations. So when the meaning to be expressed is different than a horse, but similar to a horse, referring to an animal. So we have na ashvaha as the laukika vigraha, na ashvaha. So na means, na refers to tadbhinna tat sadrusha and ashva refers to the horse. So both of them are referring to some entity. So they are semantically related. And now there is compounding that can take place. So we have na plus su, plus ashava plus su, and so the samasa saudhnya takes place, the pratipadika saudhnya takes place, and so then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies, and so we have na plus zero plus ashava plus zero as the next stage in the derivation. Now we apply 6373 as we did in the previous example, nalopo nayaha, and then we delete the consonant n, which is at the beginning of the negation marker n. 
So we get a plus 0 plus ashma plus 0. Now in this case, another sutra applies. Tasma nut achi 6374, which comes immediately after nalopo nayaha. Now we have a plus 0 plus na ashwa. So this na is added to ashwa. And so now we have a plus nashwa. And then we join them together and we get the form anashwa. This happens when the Uttarapada begins with a vowel. In the previous example, the Uttarapada was Brahmana, so it was beginning with a consonant. So Tasma Nudachi does not apply there. But when the Uttarapada is Ashva, beginning with a consonant, Tasma Nudachi applies and we get the output in the form of Anashva, where the Uttarapada takes the shape of Nashva after getting the consonant Na added. Anashva. There are some technicalities involved as well. Had na been added to a, seemingly anashva would have been derived, but then there will be some technical problems. The sandhi rules would have applied and they would have added another na in between, which would have generated the output in the form of anashva. So in order to avoid these situations, na is stated to be added to Ashva and that too in the initial position. Now there is a peculiar statement on this particular sutra available to us. Nayo nalopa stingik shepe. What it means is that in the sense of censure shepe, nai gets compounded with a Tinganta, a verbal form ending in a thing. And in this case, the consonant na gets deleted. This is very strange and very peculiar as the behavior of the speaker. So what it amounts to is that if you have na plus su plus a dhatu plus ting and then the output generated is na followed by dhatu plus thing. So if you have the meaning, O oh cruel, you do not cook. Na pachasi tvam jalma. Now here na and pachasi, they both are semantically related. There is abhava of the action of cooking. So there is this visheshana visheshya bhava. Now in this case, they get compounded. By normal procedure, they wouldn't get compounded because pachasi is not a sup. But this is an exception and this particular statement precisely accounts for this particular exception. So na gets compounded with pachasi and then nalopo, nayaha, etc. would not happen because that happens only in case of a subanta. So this particular statement is also stating that this consonant na gets deleted and so we get the output in the form of a pacha c and this is stated to be a compound output. This is an exception. But the meaning understood over here is kshepa. Only in kshepa this kind of compound is allowed or this kind of compound is visible. To summarize, Ekadeshi Samasa involves semantic conditions of the Shashti Tatpurusha Samasa stated by the Sutra Shashti 228. The exception is because of the positioning of the Shashti, the Purva Nipata or the Para Nipata. In the Ekadeshi Samasa, Shashti occupies the Para position and in Shashti Tatpurusha Samasa, it occupies the Purva position. The Nai Tatpurusha Samasa happens in a given semantic condition of negation, which means Tad Bhinna and Tad Sadrusha. The Nai Tatpurusha Samasa also presents a peculiar exception 
where a subanta gets compounded with a tinganta. These are the texts referred to and thank you very much.